Hi, I'm in my studio and uh, working on a painting and I want to share with you a technique that I like to use uh, when I don't feel like using a paintbrush or when I need a particular kind of edge. I'm working on this painting. It's not finished, but I wanted to show you some of the work that I've been doing on it. This is printing with a textured surface, um, much in the same way that you would with something like bubble wrap. Um, but this is what I want to talk about today, this kind of really um, distressed kind of edge. It's very difficult to get that with a paintbrush. Here's another painting where I've used this kind of technique, which I'm going to show you. It's a, a technique where I transfer paint from what I use is uh, wax paper, but you could probably adapt it to other surfaces. And it allows um, a kind of a, a broken, distressed line. You can get both a line in positive and also in kind of a negative form. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, I'm going to start by putting some paint on a piece of wax paper. Let's, uh, let's use dioxazine purple. And I'll just um, move that around with a with a uh, palette knife and make an interesting, making a kind of an interesting uh, shape with it. You can see the edges are very irregular. The other thing that is fun to do is to draw into it. You know, depending on what you're doing with it, I'm just going to show you a very abstract way of using it first. So on just a piece of paper, if I press down on that. you'll see that I get a really interesting edge and some interesting uh, negative lines. If I wanted positive lines, I could draw into it while it's down. So there are some positive lines. So uh, that's really the technique and you can use it in a, a lot of different ways. You can, this is very abstract. I could uh, actually do some more sort of a figurative drawing on it, representational drawing. Let's try again with the purple. I'll just move that around and maybe in keeping with that big canvas I showed you with the, the flower motif, I had some sort of objects that looked like the inside of a flower in that. Let's uh, just try this here. So you can see that's got a little bit more form. Or again, I could draw positively. And get more, you know, kind of recognizable forms. If you want, you can also use this technique on canvas. I have a, an old canvas here. It's quite a it's quite a thick one. It's an exhibition canvas. So the only problem with this technique is that you have to either put slip your hand in underneath to create some pressure, or you can use a couple of books. It's one of my favorite books on landscape painting by Mitch Algala. And, and that'll give you a little bit of something to press down on. That can actually take another one, another one of my favorite books, The Watercolors of Winslow Homer. So now I have something to actually press, press back on. I'll just maybe use red this time. Got a little bit of the purple on my on my palette knife too. So let's see what that does. I just usually press with my fingers. It usually gets a pretty good transfer. So there's already some texture here on this uh, canvas. So it's even creating more of a textured surface than it might otherwise. I often use this technique with white, titanium white paint, and glaze over it to get what I call brights. Um, that is light colors 
which aren't a result of mixing titanium and the color, but rather by putting titanium on and then glazing over. So um, you can see more about that on my video, Creating Light. So um, I hope you have fun with this technique and paint on.